afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Nooner with Greyhawk. Yes, the sun is out. It's early. It's beautiful. What a wonderful day. It's warm. Hey, it's warm. It's a plus. So we're in the 30s, and that's, you know, compared to the other day, that's balmy. So here we are. We're talking about Dreamlight Valley. We're looking at the promo from Gameloft, this flash page, this, uh, this collage that they sent to us that is representing some parts of the upcoming update but there's more here than meets the eye if you look at it okay and we're going to look at it so let's do that now first thing you notice is this symbol right here we don't know what this is i don't know what this is maybe someone else does but this has a lot of it's a hieroglyphic it's got all these little these like um i don't know what they are eyelashes they could be tentacles they could be it's a door of course uh it's got a hand in the middle it's got these little symbols down here I don't know what that is, but if anyone knows, maybe leave it in the comments. But that's, uh, so that's unknown. Back up a little bit. There's a little squirrel right here. He looks like he's been, uh, he's been, like, uh, touched by the evil that is the thorns. He might be a uh, star path pet, or that's just the way they look in the new, in, you know, perhaps a new area. Don't know. Let's back up. We got Mickey and Minnie with their new outfits. Now, I like the outfits, but, I mean, uh... Minnie needed a new outfit. Mickey really, uh, he got one for Christmas. I wish they would have put it on Donald or on Goofy. That would have been much, much better. But just to have an option for other, but they might have other options in uh, in the Star Path. I gotta move this down. In the Star Path, okay. Uh, let's see, let's scroll over here. The house, we have the new door. We have a, a weather, I don't know if we have that weather being already or not. We might. And the new house exteriors, which are going to be very nice to have uh, to customize your valley. Uh, we have, I think up here, I think this is Frosted Heights. It has a pillar. I don't think it's a new biome. I think that is indeed just Frosted Heights. So I don't think they're going to be adding uh, that as a new biome. Let's go over. And we have the Casita, the, uh, the Casa Madrigal. This is the home of the Madrigal family. Here's the candle in the window, uh, you know, the candle that that gives or that, you know, is responsible for the magic that is offered up to the family for their special powers. You know, one guy's a shapeshifter. We have one that can hear everything, you know, superpower, strong. You you know, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and that is the candle. And let's go down here. Let me see. We have the rabbit, the new star path uh, rabbit. Very cool looking little guy. Uh, and the butterflies uh, are everywhere. Uh, the butterflies are very prominent in uh, in Kanto, and I'm going to show you why. And they're going to be uh, very prominent in uh, the upgrade as well. But let's look at this first. We have, of course, the doorknob here. Uh, and this, this young lady here has uh, a bow with... Uh, some ears that look like they have either frosting or snow on them. One of the two, it looks kind of like frosting, but I think it's probably snow. And a shirt that could be celebrating the 100th anniversary of Disney. Uh, Olaf, of course. I did mention the casita. Uh, and if you've read, there's like a history, there's like a correlation between the, supposedly, that's the story I read, was there might be a correlation between the casita, the family home, and uh, the tragedy that Walt Disney had with his his mom, who was in a casita, you know, small home, uh, where her furnace had had failed and she perished because of carbon uh, monoxide poisoning. So that might have been, uh, you know, a happier turnout for the Madrigal family with their, you know, with their even though the, I think the house was like. At the end was, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say anything about the movie because I want to ruin it. So I'm not going to say it. Uh, anyway, so let's get to uh, the butterflies. Now, the butterflies are everywhere here. We see them here, 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 here. And uh, we're going to bring that up because the butterflies play a pretty big role, whether or not. They're not just there for the picture, okay? Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a meaning there. And, uh, and in Canto, butterflies are abundant within Encanto and they're, Metaphorical meaning shines throughout the film. When first receiving the gift through the magic candle at the beginning of the movie, uh, 
uh, Abuela and her fellow townspeople, I was, hope I read that right, are instantly shielded from their enemies by mountains and walls, quite literally cocooning them in safety. The song that underscores Alma and Abuela Pedro's first meeting in Los, or I don't know what that is, Oregeta, or whatever, you guys pronounce that on your own, uh, which translates to two caterpillars, both growing and evolving from two separate people into a fully fledged family. Butterflies are also featured heavily within the design of Casita itself, which could symbolize how the house serves as the protective cocoon of the madrigals. Uh, to continue on with that, we have uh, butterflies also symbolize Mirabelle's transformation and ultimate acceptance of herself, since not receiving her gift as a child. Mirabelle's mantra has always been, make your family proud. She strives every day to be helpful to her family and her town, despite the fact she doesn't have super strength, the ability to shapeshift or heal others, desperately trying to regain Abuela's approval and acceptance. Throughout the film, Mirabelle evolves like a butterfly in her own right, helping her family break down their emotional walls and showing true vulnerability while discovering that even though she doesn't have powers, her presence in her family is the true Madrigal gift. Okay, so that is uh, that is what we're talking about with the butterflies. So they do have, they have some prominence, uh, at least in the film, and more than likely they're gonna have they we're gonna have a lot to do with the update. Now let's talk about her dress, Mirabelle's dress. All right, let's look at it really closely. It has all these wonderful colors and. Uh, all, you know, some symbols and just a very um, facet. Look at this down here. That's like a dragon almost. Uh, let's talk about that. <clears throat> uh, so uh, we have the outfits that the Madrigal family wears are not only traditional and colorful, but each one features subtle hits, hints, not hits, subtle hints, and directly correlate to the wearer's magical gifts. Isabella, the inherently perfect grandchild with her uh, with the ability to make flowers bloom wears a lavender hue gown embellished with intricate floral designs louisa empowered with enhanced strength has dumbbells on the bottom of her skirt while tia peppa whose mood affects the weather wears sun-shaped earrings and even has sun rays on the collar of her dress and little drops of rain on the bottom of it mirabelle's costume is a combination of nearly everyone's designs with her outfit featuring flowers like Isabella's and also adorned with butterflies, similar to Abuela's dress. This also mimics the design of the magic candle that powers their casita and gives everyone their powers. Uh, continuing on, not only does her makeshift dress combine the color palettes of both sides of the Madrigal family tree, but it also nods to each and every one of her a relative's powers. If you scrutinize the clothing intensely, you will notice that it is decorated with a various motifs, including uh, dumbbells, sound waves, floral patterns, animals, a candle, and a chameleon. There is even a little nod to Bruno as her glasses are tinted his a signature green hue. There are also a butterflies embroidered on Mirabelle's dress. This is a, an, ama, or an, uh, an homage to the works of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, a Colombian novelist who used them prominently in his book, 100 Years of Solitude. They are featured as a nod to Colombian culture throughout Encanto and are also used to chart Mirabelle's personal journey, appearing at critical moments in the plot. All these symbols are meant to reflect how important the family unit is to Mirabelle and as uh, as well as how she, in the end, turns out to be the glue that holds them all together. So there you have it. This is what this entire splash page, you know, represents behind what it actually shows up front. Okay, that's what we're talking about. These are the things that are coming in the up uh, in the upgrade for Encanto, it's very exciting. I'm kind of glad that that it has all these little hidden meanings and stuff. So enjoy the upgrade. Enjoy everything that it has to do with Encanto, all the butterflies and the symbolism. 
It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And that is today's Nooner. I will see you all on The Daily Show.